Hey, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford, the podcast Godly Goosebumps. You say, what does that mean? Oh, we like to tell stories that you get goosebumps thinking about how God can transform and change someone's life. We want to always invite you, if you have your own story, your own testimony, and it's miraculous, send us that story. We might share it here on the podcast. This is the second half of uh, a podcast that we started last week where we're interviewing uh, Maria Rodriguez, a young girl who grew up here in Los Angeles, right over here in San Fernando, never really had any godly influence in her life, and at about age 15, as a teenager, she begins to drink, and that alcohol gets in her veins where she cannot uh, overcome that addiction. Eventually gets caught up in some drug, some drug life, um, ends up having some children, ends up needing food. She's spending her money on alcohol and not food. So she goes and she applies to, uh, to get some food stamps. And when she goes and gets those food stamps, they kind of talk her into going into some support groups to get her help for her alcohol. And what you're about to hear is really the best part of the story. We always think about, you know, conversion stories and transformation, and you do have to kind of lay the groundwork of what your life was like before you were a Christian. But the second part of your testimony is how did you become a Christian? And the third part is what is your life like now that you are a Christian? So you're about to find out the best part of this story how Marie, young girl, grew up here in the valley, addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs. Her life is fractured. She's a broken person. She has no faith, never been to church. You're going to hear this story of redemption, and it's going to be a blessing to you. Here we are, part two, Godly Goosebumps, podcast with Maria Rodriguez. When I went into that inpatient program, um, I had never been in jail. I never got a DUI. I had no idea what I was going to expect. When they took me to that room, gave me my bed where I didn't know anybody, I cried. I got on my knees, and for the first time in my life, Mm -hmm. I spoke with the Lord. Mm -hmm. God, I don't know what your plan is. I don't know who you are. I don't know what I'm doing here, but I know why I'm here. Mm. Help me. Mm. Help me to get through these days without my family, without what I had desired so much, so I thought. Uh, Mind you, I hadn't ate probably like within the last three months. It was just consuming alcohol. It got to the point where I couldn't eat, eat anymore. I cried myself to sleep. I woke up the next day about 6 o'clock in the morning, and for the first time, I had a meal, a decent meal, where I could actually eat. And there was just this peace that came over me. I had no idea what it was. The next seven days for me, it was fine. God had done something in me that I didn't even know what it was. It's something that I can't even explain. Mm. You know, to have been in that addiction for such a long time. Yes. And from one day to another, you feel so different. The peace that you have, just, it, it's just something that I, I can't even explain. I didn't know what it was, but I just continued my life like that. So the week goes by, uh, no alcohol for that week. Nope. And that's the first time you've ever gone a week without that's alcohol since time. you were yes. like 15, 16 mm-hmm. years of age. Uh, what, what happened when you got out of that week? When I got out, um, I had to do a uh, AA. Okay. Uh, they sent me to Alcoholics Anonymous. I had to get like, uh, I believe like 80 signatures, something like that. And um, I had a cousin that was attending AA and again, I never heard of Alcoholics Anonymous. Okay. Um, so basically what happened, he, he doesn't mind me telling the story, but he, I went to him and I said, would you mind if, you know, if I go with you? We attended um, those meetings and then um, there were Spanish meetings and it was okay. 
Um, then my counselor suggested that I do English meetings. So I went to English meetings. Um, I got a home group. I started getting a little bit involved. You know, they told me this is how it's going to work. You need to be of service. You need to do, um, you know, these things. It's, it's, it's suggested that you do all those things. And were you getting the food stamps at this point or no? No, I didn't get any food stamps. <laughs> no, no food stamps. <laughs> no food stamps, no. But, but you're I, getting sober. Yeah, but I'm getting sober. I had a week. I wasn't, I didn't even want to drink. I didn't, you know, that was not even in my mind. Mm. No food stamps, but I got, um, I got meetings. So <laughs> that's where it all started. So you don't get the food stamps. I don't get the food stamps. But you're you're kind of up and running with uh, AA meetings. Yes. And then uh, tell us how you first ended up getting to our church. So um, in July, a week later, I, I got out of that um, inpatient program, and I started going to meetings, and um, I attended a group where I met uh, a lady. And... Um, I asked her to sponsor me, and um, at first she said she already had too many girls, um, but I waited, and I waited. And there was something in her that I seen that I liked. I had no idea what it was, but I just liked the way she expressed herself, the way that she spoke with me. Um, and so about a month after that, after I asked her, she said, she came to me and she said, Maria, she goes, if you're still looking for that sponsor, you know, I'm available. I said, Perfect, yes. She came to you and said that? Yes. And what's her first name? Her first name is Sue. All right, Sue. So, Sue. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so she um, she told me that um, with the people that she sponsored, that um, she suggested for them to come to her home church. And I said, okay, home church. Uh, she's like, it's Shepherd of the Hills. It's in Porter Ranch. I didn't know where that was. I've never heard of Shepherd. And I said, but I will be there. I came uh, in December, at the beginning of December of 2012. So you've been sober about 12 months at this point. No, six months. Six months. Six that's, months. that's what I meant. Six, yes, about six, six months. months. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. About six months. All right, so and she just says, you got to come to my you church. you got to come to church. I said, okay, I will be there. And had you not been going to church before? I've never been to church before. Oh, okay. Never been to, ch- to church. Um, I wasn't doing anything while all, these, all this stuff was going on. Okay. Never. Okay. So for me, it was like, okay, everything was new. It was new to me. Mm. So I come for the first two weeks of, um, at the beginning of December. And um, <clears throat> my, my husband at the time wasn't doing very well. Um, he had uh, been off his job. He had heart issues. Um, but we weren't communicating really well, so I wasn't sure what exactly was wrong with him. Right. Um, in December of 2012, we came to the uh, candlelight service. My kids uh, came for the first time. I invited them, and they came. That was the first time that they ever been to any type of church in oh, years. And it's just a wonderful service, in our years. Christmas Eve with the candlelight yes, and the communion yes. and the Christmas. It's just one of the greatest services of it the was, year. It was amazing. I was very, very touched. Uh, I loved everything that I was hearing. Um, that was uh, December of 2012. Um, a couple of days after that, me coming home from a meeting, um, my husband just lived down the street from me. We're like three houses away. Okay. And he was staying with his mom, and I was with my parents. I was coming home from a meeting, and I saw the ambulance and, um, and the cops at, uh, at his house. So I thought mm, maybe you know something happened. I thought maybe it was somebody else. So I called, and my niece um, said, you've got to come down here. It's Junior. That was my husband. So I went over there, and um, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack. Uh, they tried to resuscitate him, and it was already too late. I was five months sober. And how old was he? He was, at the time, uh, 47. Wow. 47. And he just died of a heart attack. He died of a heart attack. Woke up fine in the morning, had coffee with his mom, and he said he felt some discomfort. He went and uh, just laid down for a minute, and that was it. Mm. When that happened, were you tempted to start drinking right then? Not at all. You weren't tempted to start drinking at at that time? I called my sponsor at the time, Sue, Mm. and I was on the phone with her, and I told her what happened, and she started praying over me. Oh, just started praying over me, and I sat there, and I wept. And again, 
you know, there's there's something I didn't know still at this time. I was very close-minded. I had mm. no idea what even prayer was. Mm. Um, she prayed over me, and she just said, you know, just trust in the Lord. She always, always told me to just trust in the Lord. I'm like, I'm going to be trusting on something, somebody that I don't even know. But I'm going to go ahead and do what she's telling me. Mm. I continues, uh, continuously, I went to meetings and still uh, went. Um, you know, we went through the whole thing, and I stayed connected with the fellowship. Um, thank God I, I did not have to pick up a drink. She had me connected. And right. um, a few months later, um, this lady had that had prayed over me, that had accepted me to sponsor me, um, she passed away. Sue passed away? Sue passed away. Being a member of Shepherd for many, many years. How, how did she pass? Um, well, she, she was diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. Oh my. She was diagnosed with cancer. And, um, so, I mean, I was devastated. Like, what am I going to do now? Um, I sat there and I cried. It's like, now I lose somebody else, but I always remember she always told me that verse, Proverbs three, five and six, always trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding, Maria. Whatever you do, just continue to do this. So that, that was the verse that I always stuck by, you trust in the Lord. I continued in going to AA, started, you know, again, being of service in the fellowship, started getting really involved. Mm. Um, still didn't pick up a drink. And um, I would like to say that I continued to come to Shepherd, but I didn't. Okay. I started doing my own thing, you know what? Uh, but I knew that church was there. Okay. Um, so I continued to, to do the fellowship, and then um, like about in 2000, uh, 2014, at the end of 2013-14, then um, I came. I came to Shepherd, and um, you were preaching on The Walls Fall Down. Mm. Walls Fall Down is a, it's a book that we wrote, but it's a story on uh, Joshua. Yes. Uh, at Jericho, uh, walking around walls that are undefeatable, that they're so high and so thick that nothing can bring these walls down. And God tells Joshua uh, to look at these walls and to walk around them uh, once a day for seven days and on the seventh day seven times and then shout and the walls will come tumbling down and so that was a that was a seven week series and what we did is we took that story and every day of the seven days was one thought you have one thought as you walk around your problem whatever your problem is you walk around and i think i think the first the first day is just remember the size of god don't look at the size of right. the problem but look look at how great god is and if you can see how great god is those walls shrink. They're no longer even an issue if you really have your eyes on God. So that was kind of the gist of that. Mm -hmm. And again, there's a book called Walls Fall Down that we wrote. So that's, you walked in when we're preaching through that you series. You are preaching to that. And I can identify because what could have taken seven days took them, what, 40 years? And I said, that's me right there. Mm. Where it could have taken, I don't know, two years. You know, three years to get sober, it took all this time, all these years. Right, right. So I sat through that. Um, it, I, it resonated with you. Yes, though. very much. Yeah. Yes, and I and I couldn't wait till the next week. I couldn't, mm. you know, the following week, and mm. came and I listened and I listened and um, I just, uh, oh my goodness, it was like this is me. He's telling my story. Does he even know me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I. I bought your book. I bought the book and I read it. And um, in one of those pages that you have, and I, I'll never forget this, I believe, I'm not sure if it's page 93, 94, somewhere around there, you have that for Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm. Confirmation. This is it. I need to be here. Mm. Uh, it, it was just such an amazing book, everything that you talk about, um, how we just think that um, those mountains, you know, are bigger than our problems, and it's like there we can't move that. But only God can do all of that for only us. God only can God that. can do that. You know, trust in Him, and that's all I heard over and over and over again. Trust in the Lord. 
um, that series finished and um, I didn't come faithfully every Sunday like I was coming for that series. Um, but in 2015, again, I was uh, going through a series of uh, situations where I, I, I tell the truth, I wanted to drink. I wanted to drink. You wanted to go back to drinking? I wanted to go back to drinking. Don't do it. <laughs> I did it. I went and there was a, an amazing uh, lady that I spoke with. She was a, a sponsor right after Sue. And um, I spoke with her. She was She's a beautiful lady. And she talked to me all the time. And um, she said, go back to the church. Continue to do what you're doing. Continue to go to, you know, to your meetings. And I did. Um, and then in uh, 2015, um, you know, just the Spirit was talking to me, and I got baptized. I got baptized here at Shepherd, mm-hmm. and then um, I continuously coming. And then in 2016, I attended the woman's um, encounter. Yes. Oh, the woman's encounter. My goodness, ladies, if you have not attended once it comes up again we pray that it does Mm. um it's a must Mm. it's a must i learned so much i learned so much so you give your life to the lord i gave my life to the lord and so what what's that been uh six seven years somewhere somewhere in there and now you're i mean are you are you fully engaged in church and with the Lord? And are you are you now a sponsor? Do you sponsor other people, or do yes. you feel like there's still people watching over you? Or <laughs> how, how do you feel? Yes, I do. I share my story. Um, so I do. I I served at the Women's Encounter for the three years that it was still going on until before COVID, and um, inviting you know women and sharing my story. Mm. And um, so that was very very powerful for me to be even just uh, to encounter that um so then i became um of service here at shepherd i started greeting and then i saw the usher ministry so right now i do i've been usher in the usher ministry for about four or five years now and um and and part of your family has also become a christian since then. yes praise god yes can you you explain that quickly yes um so my son um about three years ago he he called me and he was going through a situation he said mom can i come to church with you yes come he met me here and uh, you did the altar call he came accepted the lord my mom just recently um she was going through again another situation uh, with her knee having problems and Mm -hmm. um she also came to the Lord. Mm. She also came to the Lord. And and are you involved? We have a recovering uh, recover program here at the church called Christ Powered Recovery CPR. Yes. Christ Powered Recovery. I love the name of it. Yes. CPR. CPR. Christ Powered Recovery. It's it's like AA, but we really talk about how Christ is the yes. one that that enables you to overcome. So are you involved with that? Yes, yes. I've been doing uh, meetings uh, with uh, Christ Power Recovery. And, and can you explain uh, to anyone listening what exactly what happens in there and, and why they need to come? Yes, that, Christ Power Recovery is a program for any type of addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, um, shopping, um, you know, anything. It's men and women, and they meet in uh, on Monday nights at 7 o'clock. Um, here at Shepherd, mm. and uh, it, it's just an amazing, an amazing uh, testimonies that you hear every single meeting. And um, again, you hear the power of God, what God can do for us mm. as alcoholics, addicts, any type of addiction. Come join CPR. Yes. Uh, well, that is that is such a great story. And it, 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 again, mm-hmm. I met you. I didn't know any of this about you. You just look like a delightful lady. And. <laughs> <laughs> like you've you. never had a problem in oh, your whole life, goodness, and yes. uh, then you start to hear the story, and you just can't imagine all that you've been through. And then to think about the grace of God, who who seeks after us, and and God doesn't care how far we've gone down that life's road of sin. He he just desires to have this relationship. Yes. And here you are, engaged uh, with the church, in, in love with the Lord, active in your community. Um, you, wor- you work now. I don't even mind you telling where you work, if you don't mind. I don't. I work for Nielton Rodriguez State Farm, and he is an amazing man that um, I was introduced to, and he gave me the opportunity after not having a job for about 15 years. 
gave me the opportunity, and I've been with him for seven years. And do you ever have a desire to drink now? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, all. <laughs> you know, most people, uh, you know, I don't drink, but most people in our culture they drink. Does are you, are you around when other people are drinking? Do you, does it bother you? Do you wish they didn't? Do you? It, it doesn't bother me. I mean, you know, alcohol is going to be around, and um, if it is, it's not for me not today yeah not today. well you, you hold your ground girl don't yes. don't don't go back down that road i have this thing i've i've read this a long time ago and i want to use it in church and uh, so if you hear it in church sometime you know that it, you know some stories are too good to not yes. tell but this was about the guy that fell into a pit and i i when i read through this story i i think of anybody in your situation who just found themselves in a place where they literally cannot help themselves. Um, and it says uh, a man fell into a pit and he could not get himself out. And that's that's really true. When, when we find ourselves in a situation, uh, you're not able to pick yourselves up by your own bootstraps is kind of the, the phrase. And these different people walk by and they look at him down in this pit, all right, that he's stuck in. And it says, a subjective person came along and said, I feel for you down there in your pit. A, a object, an objective person came along and said, it's logical that someone would fall down there. Uh, Christian scientists came by and said, you only think that you're in a pit. A Pharisee said, only bad people fall into a pit. Mm. A mathematician calculated how he fell into that pit. A news reporter wanted the exclusive story on how he fell into the pit. Uh, Confucius said, you, if you'd listened to me, you would not be in that pit. Buddha said, your pit is only a state of mind. A realist said, now that's a pit. A geologist uh, told him to appreciate the rock strata in his pit. Uh, the county inspector asked him if he had a permit to dig in that pit. A professor uh, gave him a lecture on the elementary principles of the pit. Uh, a self-pitying person said, you haven't seen anything till you've seen my pit. Um, an optimist said, things could be worse. A pessimist said, things will get worse. Jesus, seeing the man, took him by the hand and lifted him out of that pit. And so I think of uh, people that find themselves, again, in a situation in life. And for you, it was alcohol, some drugs. Um, and I think you know this, uh, if you've been paying attention to anything, there, there are more people, I think 100,000 people died of drug overdoses this year in the United States of America. It's the highest number uh, that has ever been recorded. And uh, drug and alcohol is becoming increasingly a greater problem. One story from the Bible in Acts chapter 3, uh, there was a man at the temple gates who was, had been crippled from birth, and he cried out uh, to Peter. And uh, they were, the man was begging for some money here he was, he was a cripple, but he was wanting some money. And Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I, I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And taking him by the hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. And he jumped to his feet, he began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. And... Um, uh, Maria, I think that a little bit about you. I think that you were in a situation you maybe didn't even know what you needed, but God knew what you needed, and he sent the right people at the right time. And and another great thing is that once you got on that right path, it, it's not like everything went perfectly in your life. Your husband still died. Your Your sponsor, Sue, passed away. Life is full of ups and downs, um, and Satan comes along and tries to do anything he can do to get us off course and distracted and away from God. But praise God that you found Jesus Christ yes. and uh, that he has literally transformed your life. 
I want to give you just a minute to just to share or to speak into the life of someone. If you'll just look right into that camera right there and just someone that could be where you were and to just give them a word of hope and to point them to Jesus Christ. If you want to take just a minute to do that, we'll wrap this up. Yes, definitely. Um, anybody that's going through any type of situation, I strongly suggest that you get involved, um, continue coming to uh, attend any type of church, um, come come to Shepherd. I invite you to come to Shepherd. Um, over the time, there w- there's going to be something that you're going to hear and it's going to resonate with you. And, um, you know, God will change your life. He will. He's that powerful. He's done it for me. He's done it for um, friends that I have that have been through that same path. And uh, so I, 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 I give you that hope. Um, if you believe, believe that I believe that he can do that for you. There is hope in any type of situation. Yeah, and you know, most churches today have some type of recovery program. Yes. Um, ours is called, again, Christ Powered Recovery. Uh, a lot of churches have what's called Celebration. Celebration of Life. Celebration, celebration Recovery life. or yes. something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, find a local church find and local church. Uh, get in there and stay faithful and get a Bible, sit up front, listen. Mm, yes. And find people that have, have walked through these doors and. Uh, and know that God is able uh, to set the prisoner free. Right, right. Um, I close with this one verse, uh, Acts 4.12, that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. And, you know, this is one story. This is one example of God restoring and redeeming and making whole. I almost think of Humpty Dumpty who fell, you know, and you can't put them back together again. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true with the that's Lord. Right. Lord. The Lord can put anybody's life back together if you'll give him a chance. So, yes. Maria, thank you for coming. Thank and uh, you. I feel like I should say a prayer. I don't, I don't even know if I've said a prayer yes. on the go- uh, godly goosebumps, <laughs> but I want to today. God, thank you for today. And thank you for uh, Maria and her story. And it's a, it's a very moving, touching testimony of just a young lady who grew up here uh, in the San Fernando Valley and got got off on the wrong path with alcohol and it turned into a an addiction where it literally was destroying her life. And at her lowest point, uh, where she couldn't go much further, not even knowing, uh, but just wanting to get some money for food stamps, uh, she ran into some people that got her involved in a in a a program to help people that are struggling with addictions, and I I'm thankful God that you restored her. You are a God of a the second chance, a God of the third and fourth and fifth, a God of a a thousand chances. You allow us if we just turn to you uh, to start over. So thank you for the way you've blessed her and her family. Thank you that. Uh, her mom has become a Christian and other family members, and we look forward to seeing, God, what you continue to do in her life. And anyone who's out there who's listening and who feels as though they don't have any hope, Lord, help them to know if they only turn to you, if they turn to you, God, that you can forgive, you can restore, you can rebuild, and you can renew. God, thank you so much for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for this podcast. And I just pray for your favor and your blessing as it is watched, as it is shared, uh, that, God, that this story of, of true conversion and true restoration and true redemption will be an example to anybody who hears it. They can say, you know, if God can put someone's life together like He did, Maria. He can certainly do that in my life as well. We pray this prayer, believing that these things will come true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. And we'll see you here next week on Godly Goosebumps. (laughs) 